this is uh, just to help you. It's a sort of basic rendition of some uh, geometric shapes that occur quite frequently inside bodies. I want to just point out some features of how shadow and light forms on them. Here you'll see a pointer come up. Shortly it shows the core shadow inside the overall shadow on the cone. either side of that cool shadow the shadow is actually lighter there's a darker point within the shadow in other words here the objects sort of lit from many different angles another shape here a sort of sphere you'll see again the core shadow being highlighted coming up You'll note in that case that the core shadow is also effectively a reflection of the shadow cast on the ground by the light. In some ways with the light moving around you can see very clearly that, the, that there is just a reflection occurring in the underneath of the sphere. As we move to the light to the front, everything flattens out except you have a sort of a darker rim around the, the sphere. some tubes I put these on mainly because in some ways you can simply um, simplify all shapes in a drawing into tubes, spheres, cones um, rectangles all sorts of simple objects and uh, it's helpful to have a sort of an understanding with how the lighting falls on these objects so that it, you can even invent them you can look for these shapes inside say a banana which is coming up and you might say that's a simple tube i think the core shadow is going to be emphasized again here but that's the core the one there is just the core of light the highest point of reflection there's the core of the shadow see the reflection coming from the dark side of the ground so the dark edge nearest the shadow is actually lighter than the a light part of the shadow. This sort of shape is very uh, useful to sort of know how to light simply because it sort of occurs so much in buildings. You can sort of see across the faces of each of each uh, square in there that there's a variation in the tonality and did you even get a reflection of the shadow on the nearest edge to the ground? Likewise on the top surface you can see a variation from a light grey to a bright white really. The light source in this case is a lamp which has got a globe in the center and a sort of a reflective uh, rim around it. So it's, in effect it sort of has a double shadow. This is a more complicated object. Not that complicated but it's sort of like a truncated pyramid upside down. you probably note with more complicated shapes that faces of the shape that face in the same direction tend to have the same tonality.
Now here's where colour it interferes a great deal with perception of the shadow. But you'll still see a marker for the core shadow on the apricot. So, sorry, it's a nectarine rather than apricot. That's a sphere, roughly, that, that nectarine. And the bananas are like curved tubes. So over each section of the banana, you can think of it like a tube. And the lighting can be considered in a similar way. So you can sort of make a rough um, estimate of how the shadow will fall on these sort of objects. Just one last look at the still life with the bananas and the nectarine as this is from a still photo now so we can sort of study it in a little bit more detail we see that the bananas are sort of bent tubes you could say that they have facets flat facets and you could think of those flat facets as parts parts of a sphere parts of a curve and sort of look at them that way there's lots of different ways of actually breaking up a, an object or a group of objects into sort of more simple shapes. And we only do that in order to uh, facilitate our drawing so that it enables us to see the shadows that are there. It's surprising how if we don't do that, it's difficult to see how the shadows fall within an object or around an object. So the apricot Sorry, I keep calling it apricot, but the nectarine has a spherical shape, basically a spherical shape, but because of all the colour in it, we barely see the actual shadow in it. But having related it to being a sphere, we're able to see the shadows as we would just imagine if it's a flat white sphere with no colour. And that will help a great deal in actually forming the shape of the fruit itself. It's worthwhile practicing trying to just see different ways of breaking up objects into just basic shapes, like these geometric shapes. In a, a following video, I'll do a demonstration of how to split an object up into shapes and how to use it in the drawing.